Before I start this video, I just wanted to thank each and every one of my YouTube subscribers. Today I reached a very important milestone of 5,000 subscribers to my YouTube channel. I'm very excited about that. On a daily basis, an average of 50 new people subscribe to my YouTube channel. Hopefully that will continue and I will continue to put out more videos. And hopefully many of my subscribers can also continue to post links to all my videos on other websites and blogs so I can continue to grow my channel. Now in my previous video I showed you an R-Core transformer which was an unusual type of a transformer that I came across on a salvage mission and I ended up rewinding that transformer which I used to make this homemade benchtop power supply. Now I could have used a regular 2 amp 24 volt transformer if I had access to one which I did not. Unfortunately most of the transformers I come across are either 5 volt or 12 volt and I always have the ability if I want to pop in a transformer of my choice into this unit. But the transformer that I wound is approximately one and a half amps for the output and I can operate between 1.25 volts all the way up to around 30. Now ordinarily I only use between 2.5 and 15 volts for all my projects. So anything below 2.5 volts I would never really use and anything over 15 I would very rarely use. Once in a while I might have a 24 volt project to try but outside that I would have no need to even go above 24 volts. Now what I did is I had this old Rayovac battery charger laying around and I ended up gutting it. I opened up the unit. As you can see, there's all my components. There's the transformer that I wound. And to take a closer look at the inside here, you can take a look at these images right here. Now in order to put all these components in here, I had to take my Dremel with a cutoff wheel and remove the entire battery bay that was in there. Once I cut all that out, I then had the space inside to place all the components. I drilled holes for cooling, which I'll get to in a minute. I also took the Dremel and I cut a little notch out of the plastic to install this on-off switch. This is a 24 volt cooling fan. I didn't have any 12 volt ones around, so I used this 100 milliamp 24 volt fan. I got this from scrap. Now everything that you see here, except for this digital voltage meter, I picked this up online. This was only like $4.99 shipped, and it goes from zero to 33 volts. It is absolutely great. I suggest buying one. You go to eBay, just search for a DC panel meter, 0-33V and this will come up. It's excellent. You can use it for scooters. You could use it for any voltage monitoring. And it comes in blue, yellow, green, all different colors. Now this banana plug and terminal connector here, this I had on a breadboard. So I took it off the breadboard. I had an extra one. And I could either put a wire through the hole, just like a speaker, turn this down and tighten it, and that could supply power to my circuit or my breadboard or I could just clip my alligator clip onto each side or I could put a banana plug into the opening of each one when it's threaded all the way in like that. Now I could plug a banana plug in. So what I did to make this, I took my transformer which I wound to have an output of close to 40 volts because in order to have a steady 24 to 30 volt output you need a higher voltage coming off the transformer. So I have this transformer, which is then rectified over here. I took four 5822 3 amp shot key diodes and I made a bridge. The reason why I use those is to cut down on losses to get more power out of the transformer. This is a 50 volt capacitor. Each one is rated at 1000. So I have 50 volts at 2000. They're both in parallel. That's the filtering 
for that output going to these terminals. I also added a winding of about 20 turns of 20 gauge wire on the same secondary winding and what that does that goes to another rectifier which I made out of 1N4002's I made a bridge out of those and that goes into a filter capacitor also and after it leaves the filter capacitor the 12 volt or so output that I get from that is reduced down to 6. I have a 6.2 volt Zener regulator circuit. The reason for that circuit is when the load is applied to this transformer you will get a voltage drop and I don't want the meter's brightness to vary with respect to the voltage. I have 12 volts coming off the transformer which is then kept regulated to around 6.2. So even when the voltage drops when I have a load on these terminals the output here will remain nice and bright. Now everything you add to this transformer, the more windings you put on the secondary, that takes away from the overall power output of the transformer. So I wanted to keep that to a minimum. Now because this fan is a 24 volt fan and I didn't want to take any more power off of the transformer, I wanted the transformer only to operate the power supply and the voltmeter. So what I did is I took a 2.25 microfarad 250 volt capacitor and that's supplied by a 200 milliamp fuse. From that capacitor which is in series with the incoming AC line it then flows into a bridge rectifier. The other side of the bridge rectifier which goes to the neutral line. The output of the rectifier has a 25 volt 1000 microfarad capacitor and then from there it goes right to the fan. When the fan is on at full load, I'm running right around 23 volts, so it works out perfect. I have the power incoming here. It goes to a 1 amp fuse, which goes to the power switch. From the power switch, there's a 200 milliamp that feeds this fan, and the entire circuit is protected by that 1 amp fuse. This entire circuit here draws around 800 milliamps from the AC line. I'm very happy with having only a one and a half amp output. Most of the circuits I work on are way under one and a half amps and the voltage range is more than sufficient for what I need. But if you prefer to have a higher current output, you can go out and get a 24 volt step down transformer from 120 volts with a four amp output. And then if you check out the sheet on the LM317T, the data sheet, you will see at the very bottom there is a circuit which shows three of those in parallel to give you up to a four amp output for your power supply. So for now I'm happy with one and a half amps. Now with the size of the housing I have here I could only fit maybe a two amp transformer so I can get an extra half of an amp besides the transformer I have in there now which would be nice. I mean I couldn't run it continuously because the LM317T is only designed for one and a half amps continuous. But if I did have a two amp transformer, I'd be able to use intermittently up to two amps if I wanted to using the 317T. Now for maximum cooling, what I did is I cut a hole in the top of this housing and I positioned my 317T and the heat sink right in front of this opening for the air to enter. So when this fan comes on, it has great cooling. So it sucks the air this way and it blows it out the top. So all the air rushes in and it strikes right against that heat sink plate, cooling it. Now over here is the only other hole I made. And that allows air to enter through here and travel right past the primary of the transformer to keep that cool. Now this transformer runs fairly cool. It gets only a little warm if there's no load on it. When there is a load, it's completely silent. I don't hear a thing. When there's no load, there is a little bit of a buzz or a hum that comes off of it, which is no big deal. Now for added protection, right against the primary coil, pushed very tightly with thermal compound, is a thermal switch. It's rated at 150 degrees Fahrenheit. In the event this coil gets too hot, the switch will open the circuit, turning off the transformer to allow it to cool. Once the transformer is cool, the circuit will power back up again. 
Right over here is the potentiometer. This is a 10K. This is part of the 317T circuit. If you check out my video list, there is a video for the LM317T adjustable voltage regulator. It's also a good idea to refer to the data sheet and it will tell you how to get up to four amps out of three of the LM317Ts. I'm going to power this up now and put a 1.2 amp 12 volt dome light bulb on here. And like I said, it will go up to 1.5 amps. So I'll keep it just a little under to show you. Let me unscrew this. Okay, this is the bulb. It draws around 1.2 amps. Let's put the bulb right here. It's going to probably blind the camera a little bit, but nothing I could do. Let me clip one of my alligator clips like that. That's the beauty of this. And I can clip that like that. Now I'm going to power it up and adjust the voltage to 12 and the light will come on. Eleven two two. Let me just lower it down. Show you that. All right, you can hear a little bit of a hum. That's what it does when the when it's not drawing too much. Now the LM three seven T right now, if it wasn't for this air ramming in and hitting it, would start to get pretty hot because you're going from a very high voltage down to a very low voltage to get this to go dimly like this. So let me turn it back up. Right now, we're at 12.69. Let me go like that and hide that. All right, so we're right around 12 volts. I'll show you here. Let me cover that up. Alright, so now I could turn this. And I could put out close to 14 volts with this bulb right now. And that's kind of pushing it for this unit. That's close to one, that's close to one and a half amps. I checked it with my with my wave tech meter. If I leave it around 12, it's around 1.2. Now I let this thing run for about an hour and the transformer. Nice and cool. Stays nice and cool. There's the fan, you can hear sound. Turn that down. Oop, turning it the wrong way. Now the lowest this will go is around 1.28, 1.3, and that's because of the LM317T the range that it puts out is between 1.2, I think, 35 volts. And for me, that's not a problem because there's no need to go to zero. So I go back up. If you wanted, you can add a couple of diodes. And that would get the voltage down, so it would be near zero at the bottom. But then you'd have a little bit of a voltage drop when you put the load across the circuit. Let's put this back up to 12. Now when I disconnect this, we're at 1201. I'll disconnect the load. You'll hear the transformers. Right now it's totally silent except for the fan. You'll hear a little bit of a buzzing sound and then when I put it back and when I reconnect the load, you'll see this will go right back to around 12 volts. There you go, so it's right back to 12. Almost 14. So for me, this is great. Like I said, I only use between 2.5, which would be right around there, all the way up to generally 15. But I can't push 15 because that would draw more current than I have. I only have up to one and a half. Now the way I have this set up, you really can't overload it because of the way my transformer set up with the capacitor in series with it. So that's my maximum output is around 13.8. It will not go any higher because it can't feed it. 
14. The only way to get it to go higher would be for me to pop out this transformer and throw in a 24 volt 2 amp transformer. And then this voltage would be able to go higher and really drive this bulb and get more current going through it before it eventually burns it out. But it's a really nice um, homemade power supply. I'll be getting a lot of use out of it and you will be seeing it in my videos. If you have any scrap components and scrap housings and transformers, give it a shot and make one. It's not that hard to make. Thanks for watching this video. Please rate it a thumbs up, subscribe, and post links to this video on other websites and blogs.